Hi, how's it going? So to recap, in the past few uh, videos in the series, we created an instance and then we made a debug messenger. Before we press on, I'm just going to note that, well, the debug messenger was used for the um, validation layer, which was tied to the instance creation. So to save space, because look at this, there's not much these functions by themselves are pretty small, so we can probably wrap them together and that will help the cohesion of the program make it a little more organized. So um, there we have that. Now what we want to do today is we want to make a device. Well, there's a few things involved in that. For one thing, okay, so I'm just going to make a function called make device. And that will do all of the kind of device stuff. Now, there are many steps. Well, there's a few steps involved. The first step is we need to query our system and say, okay, which devices do we have? So I'll just make a little stub there. Okay, so just like we took the logging stuff and put that in its own file, and we took the um, instance stuff and put that in its own file, I'm going to take the device stuff, I'm going to make a device file. This device um, file will need access to all of the uh, global imports defined in the config file. And of course, the main file will need access to the device file. Okay. Now for the device stuff. Um, to start with, just a little note. So I just grabbed this off the Vulkan documentation. It's probably a good uh, little paragraph to put at the intro of the file. Okay. So we have physical and logical devices really, really think of like a physical device as like the thing that exists. So it's kind of read only in the sense that you can kind of only query it. Okay. Um, but then we have logical device and logical device is kind of the gateway into the device. Okay. So if we want to do any like graphics stuff, we don't use our physical device. We use our logical device, which is really an abstraction around the existing physical device. So, um, the basic process is, first of all, we choose a physical device and then we create a logical device and then we also grab uh, Q families from the physical device. But we'll talk about that later. Basically, Q families are used to... Um, basically, Q families are the functionality for uh, doing any work with a, a physical device. But yeah, we'll get to that. So, to start with, going to choose a physical device. Okay. This takes in the instance and optionally we can print debug statements. Okay. So, um, first thing we do is we look through our system and we say, uh, which physical devices do we have? Okay. So print this out, choose physical devices. Then we use this uh, function here, enumerate physical devices. This returns a list of physical devices. So we do that one. We're just going to log out the um, number of, of devices that we have. And I'm just going to kind of cap it there for now. And just double check that this is all working. And maybe we'll keep that return. Okay, so I'm uh, we've got device. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so now we're going to go uh, and that takes the instance and the debug. Okay, that should be fine. Awesome. Run that. Uh, there is, oh, there are one physical devices available. Awesome. Cool. That's probably my graphics card. So now 
As I said, this gives us a list of physical devices, but we might, we might want to know some things about the physical devices. So what we can do is we can, I just made this function log device properties, which will just um, basically print out uh, stuff. So um, I'll make that down below. Okay, so we get a device and um, we want to get the properties based on the device. So we have this function called get physical device properties and here's its C declaration here. Um, we've taken the physical device. Um, then we have this pointer. So if we were running this in C, we wouldn't return the properties. We would allocate them internally into this pointer. And then that by the time that function exits, the pointer would be updated. Python is a little bit more straightforward with that. Um, <clears throat> this, the same thing gets called, but the result is passed out to a list, or passed out to a um, uh, structure, or in Python, you know, like a class. So we do this, and we get the properties based on the device. Then in C, the structure has a bunch of fields, a bunch of components, all of these. Um, and these are things which we can uh, work with, we can query. So to start with, I'm going to print out the device name that's over here. It's a character, it's basically a string, right? Um, and then, well, an array of characters. And then we have um, this device type. Now device type is a enumerator, Vulcan physical device type. I wonder if this even, if I can get in here. But I might be able to. Sense uh, physical device properties. Ah, never mind. Never mind. Anyway, it's 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 buried in there somewhere. We could look around. Anyway, it's in the documentation. This is how it's officially defined. So um, this physical device type is an enumerator, which means it's. Uh, what am I even? What am I thinking? We just click in there, right? Um, this is a set of all the enumerators. Um, so we have integrated GPU, discrete GPU, all of these options here, other, and all of that. Okay. Awesome. So we can basically test that and print out the device type. Awesome. Why am I taking so long to talk about this? Well, it is important to understand, I guess. So if we run this right now, then uh, yes, we have the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070. Awesome. That's a discrete GPU. It's separate from the, you know, it's a, it's a graphics card. Awesome. Good. Good. So then the next part is this last little bit that I commented out, which is we then want to check whether the device, in this case there's only one, is suitable. So we've got this function called is suitable. We'll probably be expanding this later as we look at other um, aspects. But uh, here's how this goes. So we have this function, Test if something is suitable. Okay. Um, to start with, we get um, this list of strings, which is the extensions that we want our device to support. At this point, we're going to keep it really simple. It's just, can the device run a swap chain? Can it put images on the screen? That's the only thing that we're going to check for. Most should be able to do it. So um, then just for debugging purposes, we print through, um, print through the things that we're requesting is only one of them. Then we call this other function, which I'm going to make in a second, that takes the device and the list of extensions we're requesting. 
and returns whether all of those um, extensions are supported by the device. Okay, cool. So now let's make that other function. By the way, I'm leaning more, at the moment I'm leaning more into the uh, like copy paste style of, of demonstrating rather than typing um, because Vulkan programs get big very quickly and the benefit is not in the typing, the benefit is in the understanding and researching um, tutorials, documentation, all of that. So that's my philosophy that I'm going with for this series. We'll see how that <laughs> turns out. So um, we've got this function here which takes the Vulkan device, the list of strings for the extensions and debug, and tests it. So we've got, um, we go enumerate device extension properties, which returns a list of the uh, device properties which are supported. But the device property is a composite data type. And so um, to get the string that represents it, we need to access its extension name member. So we do this list comprehension and this produces a list of all of the extension names which the device supports. Okay, we might also want to additionally print that out to the console. Then we use Python's in uh, operation, which is very, oh, okay, okay, so for device in there, okay. If the extension is not in, you know, it's, it's, it's a very compact way. Under the hood, it's running a loop, but it serves our purposes just fine. So with all of that done, we can go back and check it. Okay. So right up the top. Okay. So we're requesting the swap chain extension and the set of all extensions which are supported is all of these, including swap chain over here. And so the result is yes, the device can support the extensions. So that's it. The thing with devices, like I said, they exist. To get a physical device, you don't have to allocate any memory. You don't have to destroy any memory when the program is done. That thing it's just there. So um, we are good at this point. So to recap, what we did today is we had a look at the some of the steps involved in selecting a physical device to run Vulkan on. Remember, a physical device exists. It does not Memory does not need to be allocated or destroyed. I know, in Python, the concept of memory allocation might seem a little foreign, but that will come up. I mean, it already comes up in OpenGL. Ah, what word was I? So we looked at choosing a physical device and we also looked a little bit at program organization. And a lot of these parts will be revisiting later as our program gets more complicated. So that is it for now. I hope you had fun and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.